In this short video, we will show you how easy it is to install the Cobite Free Edition on a small cluster. We have a five node cluster, one machine as a client, and four machines as storage servers. To start the install, you just have to copy and paste the command from our web page and run it on a Linux machine. This will download the installer and execute it. The installer uses a QNS, a web-based DNS system Cobite runs for you. This simplifies the setup. You can switch to your own DNS record later on. Next, we change the username to log into the remote machines of the cluster. For our machines, it's root. You can specify a SSH key file or leave it empty if you want to use the default SSH key, which is what we do here. In this screen, we can specify which machines to install the Cobite services on. We will load the IP addresses from our servers.txt file. You can also enter the IP addresses one at a time, but loading from a file is easier. The installer checks each machine to ensure we can SSH into it, run sudo, and check that the machine matches the minimum configuration. Once these checks are done, we can continue by loading the list of client machines from our clients.txt file. You can also enter the IP addresses directly if you do not have a file. The installer does the same checks again. Now we can start the actual installation. The installer logs into each machine, checks the Linux distro, and installs the matching repository, and activates the tuned profile where supported. Now that the installation is complete, the installer shows you the commands to add additional servers or clients later on. The next step is to go to the Cobite web console to complete the cluster setup. First, the usual, a license agreement. Next step is to configure the admin user. The email address is only used to send notifications from the cluster to you. On the next screen, you can configure an SMTP server for email notifications. We highly recommend this for a production setup. The last step is the license key. You can skip this step to get a seven day trial of the free version and enter the key at any time. You can get your free edition key from support.cobite.com. The setup is complete and we can now go to the web console dashboard. The system tells us that devices need our attention. Click on this message to get to the devices tab. Here you can see that Cobite detected the empty drives on the machines. Cobite only shows empty drives for formatting. If you have used the drives in your servers before, you should run wipe-a on those. Then Cobite will detect them as unformatted drives. Let's select all of them and turn them into Cobite devices. The system automatically proposes which disks to use for metadata. Let's click Start Tasks. Now we can go to the Tasks Lists. This tab shows all tasks in the system, like those formatting and mounting the drive. Once this is complete, we can go back 
to the Devices tab. Selecting Group by Server shows you which drives are located in which server. The empty DMR symbols are drives that currently contain no data. The Client tab shows you all clients accessing the cluster, including NFS or S3 services. The Volumes tab shows all volumes in the system. Each Cobyte volume is a separate namespace. Since they are thinly provisioned, you can have a large number of volumes. Each can use all resources of the cluster. Let's create a new volume. But before we do that, let's log into the actual client machine via SSH. You can see that the Cobyte client is mounted in slash Cobyte. It's using the QNS name for your cluster. The Cobyte mount is currently empty since we don't have any volumes. So let's go back to the Cobyte web console and create a new volume. We will call it demo dash volume. Currently, the volume is empty. If we do an LS on the Cobyte mount, we see the volume. The Cobyte client has a built-in auto-mounter and shows all volumes as subdirectories. Let's change into the demo volume and create a text file. You now have a fully fault tolerant file system with automatic failover installed in just a few minutes. If you have any questions, feedback or issues with the installation, you can go to our community forum for help. Thank you.